Hello everyone, welcome to our leadership series. This is our anniversary special, 15th anniversary. And as you know, we have and picked uh, very few leaders from the technology world. And uh, one such person is Mr. Asim Barsi, who is senior vice president at Samsung. And both of them doesn't don't need any introduction. So Asim, welcome to the show and thanks for giving us your time. This is so much important for two reasons. One is this that uh, if you remember when I started this company, it was 15 years back, back, and I met you when you were just transitioning from Nokia to Samsung at your office. It was very, very heydays, if it recollects. And I just uh, checked back that you've just completed 50 years and six months at Samsung. So how how I don't think it can get you. Know? <laughs> I think it's a it's a it's a great memory you have and a great memory for me uh, these last 15 years and something. Pleasure to meet you, Ramesh. Uh, thanks for having me over. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, Asim, as you know, this is all about leadership and what how things have been. First of all, I want to start with a very quirky question, which is that one gadget that you're using, which you don't want Samsung to know about it, because Samsung practically makes everything. You know, so <laughs> is there anything in your phone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Ramesh, in uh, in a in a partnership, you know, which is 15 years and counting. We just spoke about, you know. You normally don't cheat on your partner, so there's nothing I use that my 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 partner, who I'm very happy with, and I believe my partner is very happy with me. In sure. Sure. there's nothing we hide from each other. Sure. So now, Asim, uh, you know, being at the position that you are in, I I know that what challenges you face every day. So what are your some basic type, you know, basic uh, mantras or you know what inspirational quotes that you always refer to or you. You know, every day I think which can which really inspires you when the chips are totally done. When when you work in large teams and large external partnerships and there are so many cross dependencies and, and leverages you have with your colleagues, with your partners, with your customers, etc. There was one there's one quote I had come across, uh, Harry S. Truman. He said uh, something to the effect, he said, it's amazing what you can achieve when you don't really care who takes the credit for it. Yeah. And I think that's uh, that's such an important thing when you're working in teams and you know you work uh, in flat organizations in in intense and and uh, high high intensity organizations that you know you just don't have the time or the necessity to get into worrying about uh, uh, who's the face and who's the name. It's really about that team. That's the face and that's the name. And I think you achieve so much more as as uh, uh, well-oiled, well-trusting teams. Sure. And I said, any book that you want to suggest all our readers that has really been a big motivation in the leadership space, you know, which has really taught you a lot of things. The book is by Iron Rand called Fountain Head. And Fountain to me, uh, you know, if I was to just summarize it and saying what really uh, stood out for me and it really kind of connected or spoke to me was absolute objectivity and how things in life can be when you just be very objective it's a perspective it's a it's a very very objective perspective in fact sure that book i think uh, is uh, is a classic to me at least and i would recommend a lot of people uh, especially in our ilk of business and 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 uh, and building teams and growing organizations and doing right things i think it's a, it's a book that 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 says a thing or two to us great and uh, talking about books you know I'm a, I've just started reading by fluke uh, this book on Samsung called Samsung Rising, Rising by Jeffrey Cohen. I don't know if you uh, read this book. Maybe it's a very interesting book on how Samsung journey has been. And there's one particular, uh, you know, one particular phrase I came across, uh, which I which actually registered in my head, like how by earlier chairman Mr. Lee Bunku, and uh, he said that change everything except your wife and children. That's how the transition happened, right? Of course, he has been quoted a lot of places for this board. And until today, that ethos really ceased because the kind of products Samsung makes are really cutting edge. So, is there some, uh, you know, uh, some some gospel or guidelines which keeps coming up from the higher ups to, as in terms of leadership motivation, as to you know which keeps striving 
everybody has Samsung to excel because after one fiasco, everything has been really, really, really uh, exciting. All of us, even including the tech journalists, including everybody. No, you know, Ramesh, I think at Samsung, our core values and our core uh, instincts uh, have held us in good stead over the decades across the globe, across the businesses and, and technology lines we work across and beyond, in fact. And I think at the very core of that uh, lies extremely visionary and uh, not, I wouldn't say multi-year, but multi-decade vision and statements that that you just recalled from that book change everything but your but your wife and, and your spouse and kids right yeah and and few such statements uh, i won't recall all of them off the cuff but yes they're very much inscribed in in all our minds and and our uh, workspaces these are really really epochal statements and values the company has lived by and continues to as we go and proceed in our work and business across the world so these are these are absolute truths. I would I would say that this is not only true to what Samsung does and what we excel in or what we uh, pride ourselves in, but I think these are human truths. You know, sure. change change is is essential. Change is healthy. Change is inevitable. Whichever way you want to embrace it, change has to be there. Talking about the smartphone industry because that's really been a very disruptive stage. Now, you know, we have the Note series, we have everything at, from Samsung at every price interval. Which smartphone uh, contributes to the most buy of for Samsung India? Like which product line? Well, you know, if you look at the, the, the structure of the Indian market, we are a, a very large middle of the market, belly of the market kind of consumption pattern across categories, across consumer categories. I won't restrict it to mobile phones. Sure. And thereby, it's no surprise that our mid segment of our portfolio, the mid to mass is, is uh, 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 which ships the largest in volumes and inevitably also contributes a significant buy of our value business sure. and in that I'm very, I'm very happy to tell you that you know one of our youngest portfolios which we launched uh, just a little over a year ago early 2019 it's called the Samsung Galaxy M series which right. we've launched our online uh, 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 fans and our online consumers it's in a rapid amount of time as short as this grown to become the largest pie of our business by volumes so yeah, that, that's that's yeah. where uh, all of the growth and business lies. Has the schedule changed with the new normal? Like work from um, I know that you're working to come to the office and working, but everybody has gone through changes, right? Like in your personal life, how does it? How do you gel? You know? Uh, actually, not really. When the lockdown happened, no doubt our schedules changed in terms of place of work and hours of work and patterns. Uh, but as things have normalized and opened up, for me personally, I'm speaking of, of course. Uh, my schedule is pretty much back on uh, on schedule. Uh, I, 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 I'm I getting to spend, I just probably am, the intensity of the time we spend at work right now is increased because, you know, we're not yeah. all teams at work physically. Correct. So Correct. our, our, our uh, uh, you know, imperative to connect, stay connected and get things going with a certain amount of distance and electronic mediums in between us, yes, there's a lot more effort that goes in there. There's a lot more effort that goes in and now in managing and contributing at home, right? Something sure. that we took for granted pre-lockdown, you can't anymore. Correct, uh, correct. Including things like, you know, your personal care and, and health and, and fitness and all, uh, what you would do a lot more outdoors or in a, in a gym space or sports space, you do it at home. So I'm seeing the one thing that's changed is this everything has become a bit more intensive now sure. i don't know if that's a change others are seeing i see that so i'm working in office i'm living at home i'm doing my stuff but everything has become more intense for me at least <laughs> the coming days you know with the economy and everything smartphones are still on the rise like everybody is doing gold all the numbers everywhere seems to be on the rise do you think that trend will still continue or after the festivities will tend to tip down no, we don't see that. See, again, if we look at it, there is a still a lot of headroom in the Indian market for adoption of tech, growth of and penetration of smartphones. We still have a formidable base of feature phone users active in India. 
So in terms of headroom for growth, in terms of smart devices, tablets, wearables, other connected devices, there's a lot of headroom. And uh, year upon year, we've seen that, you know, within the year, there may be cyclic curves which are festive in nature or seasonal in nature, but they're just, they're just cyclic curves. The good point is that at an annualized level, the market has been growing for 25 years on the trot uh, that telephony is, mobile telephony has been operating in India. So that's the good part. Phone 2 is coming, in fact, in any time and as far as a very revolutionary device. Now, of course, these phones, all the phone technology as such is a very premium and it, by the time it becomes mass market, it will be some time. What, what do you think, how adaptive are the people, consumers, like a lot of people buy phone because of the fat factors, lifestyle factor, or you think actually it will become mainstream, for example, M51 will come in fold, or is it that it's going to stick to the premium end for a long time? Okay, uh, very interesting question. So, firstly, I would say that, look, fold is, is anything but a fad. And the reason I say that is I'm saying that by enormous amount of consumer insights and our own uh, 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 conception development of this category to tell you that the kind of user experience, the kind of user interface a consumer is able to now get out of a smartphone, which opens up and virtually gives you a tablet-like interface and a tablet-like uh, screen area is it's it's a very dual use experience in that sense and is that is that a fad or is that mainstream for sure we see this go uh, uh big and go mainstream over the years to come it's not going to happen in a in a quick span of time but yes it will definitely get more democratized this new tech and new form factors any premium features that we are you're planning to put in the budget uh, budget range of smartphones because that's something can be very exciting. Oh, sure. So we, uh, Ramesh, we do that uh, uh, as as main course for us. Correct. For example, you know, over the years when you look at our flagships and, and truly flagships are the fountainhead of our innovation, of our new tech, of our world first uh, uh, experiences that we introduce, no doubt. We herald those through a flagship, but in a year of a span of year or a, a few more you see a lot of those key technologies keep cascading into the the non-flagship end of our portfolio and i'll give you examples you know whether it's in terms of our camera tech our display tech our, our processing and our memory uh, uh, capabilities and many many more aspects that go to build our smartphone experience and our flagship you will keep seeing it uh, over time getting democratized into into more middle and high end segments of our portfolio so and what about what do you what about samsung pay it's a very very innovative way of payment but how long do you think before it becomes you know kind of mainstream in india i mean is is, is there some really big progress happening or is it oh, uh, okay so samsung pay that we launched in uh, in march 2017 uh, up until now, I must, I'm, I'm happy to tell you, it's adoption in our device users, in our device owners, which have Samsung Pay enabled, has been very strong. The, the, we have over 10 million users of Samsung Pay of our Samsung devices and their, their, their frequent usage, their monthly and daily active usage is of a very, very high order. So we found that consumers who once experienced the ease and utility and the experience of uh, Samsung Pay and the security of Samsung Pay, it becomes their go-to payment app or go-to payment platform rather, not app. And, and mind you, there are a lot of payment platforms and payment techs in India and all are great ones at that. Within that, Samsung Pay is perhaps a very unique payment platform which, which serves uh, UPI to, to bank transfers, to uh, wallet payments, uh, uh, to contactless credit and debit card payments. So it's a, it's still is a one of a kind integrated payment platform. It's mainstream amongst us Samsung device owners who have Samsung Pay embedded on those devices. Uh, you know this with AI, I mean the AI is also complemented and all equally pulled back because it's try, kind of dumping down creative talent but you know it's smart more smartphones where do you how do you think more and more ai when they come 
bundle with smartphones is that a direction even samsung has globally like you know a lot of things will become for example bixby and more of this thing so is ai a very very important strategy going ahead to integrate in the smartphones um yeah I, I, you know you you know in a sense you uh, you you have the answer in your question as well in saying that look whether you look at bixby or several other uh, platforms that we are working on globally uh, have a lot of ai embedded into their development into their uh, 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 back end so yes is that going to uh, be a way of the future in our devices or in 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 how technology runs in our lives in future for sure yes what productivity app do you use like to do list which app do you use um uh, you know i use a very very fundamental app which is which i which i can never change and get out of is samsung notes and and i got into that with the samsung note devices so there's a feature called samsung notes so that becomes yeah, my uh, i i long ago virtually stopped using pen and paper and the most uh, important question which smartphone do you use <laughs> from samsung okay so you know uh, the whole thing was in you know one of my occupational hazards one of the occupational hazards i i i live with is that my handsets keep changing per force i'll keep trying out the next te- next handset and the next technology we are getting so i i uh, i keep changing my handsets my present device i'm using is the samsung galaxy m51 uh, which is the latest of our uh, stables it's the largest and the only battery of its kind as you also mentioned 7000 milliampere hour battery on a smartphone i mean who would have uh, guessed it we launched it so i'm using and i'm loving that phone nowadays thank you wasim thank you very much and thank you everybody for watching thank you so much